down uh, is tough enough to get back up and keep coming, and that's what the Lakers have found out this afternoon. Philadelphia, a great road team a year ago on their way to the, the finals. Start of a very long road trip for them. Larry Brown would love to get this first one to set the tempo. They play tomorrow night here against the, the sizzling Los Angeles yes. Clippers. Yes, Clippers 15 and 11, three straight wins, seven of the last 10. They come off a victory over Sacramento. So they're back to back here at the Staples. This game, one of a seven game Western swing. Derek Coleman draws the foul. Sixers do not return home until Monday, January the 7th. Foul is called on Robert Ory. When they will play the Los Angeles yes. Clippers again. And the road has not been kind to Philadelphia this year last year they were 27 and 14 on the road best road record in the nba thus far this season they've won five of 14. a lot of that had to do with their great start a year ago they shot out 10 and 0 and that really gave them the belief and the commitment that they could be one of the best teams and they went on to prove it this year with the injuries and people slow to come back and new players on the team it's been an adjustment iverson with his first rest of the half matt harpering Checks back in, so Iverson sits down with 17 points. And the 76ers now lead by eight. Pressure by Philadelphia. Matson having trouble and just did beat the five-second count. Well, who's going to handle the ball? They put it in Robert Ory's hands, realizing that Derek Coleman will not get up 94 feet. Here's Brian Shaw, who just came on. Matson not able to tip it. Ory on the steal. Ory has it knocked away, but... Batted out of bounds by Snow. Saved by Eric Snow. Derek Coleman, nice defensive rebound there, but just could not see Robert Ory hanging out there in the outlet passing lane. All right, Bill, who's going to score for the L.A. Lakers? <laughs> I'm not sure who's going to create. That's the biggest problem. I mean, the, the team the, is the, without their two dominant scores. They have to stay in the ball game right now by manufacturing some points. Well, Phil Jackson has taken Kobe Bryant out for the first time in the game. He's one for six. He's got two points. He does have five assists. And with Shaq sitting over there on the sideline, there is no safety net for Los Angeles. Corey Blunt. Call for that sixer foul. We're looking at a Laker group that has Ori up front with Matson and George, Hunter and Shaw in the backcourt. These are all players who are specifically designed to play with Shaquille O'Neal. But Brian Shaw able to knock it down. Design. This whole roster, with the exception of Kobe, is about guys who can play off the ball, move, feed the post. I mean, Robert Ory is the perfect example. Rick Fox. Brian Shaw. The Shaq not out there. Not happening for him. Aaron McKee is, is hot. He's three for three from the field. He has six points. And the 76ers lead by seven. A uh, chance for the Sixers lead to grow right here. If they just stick and stay on their men and make them play over the top, uh, the 76ers should control the play for the next two or three minutes. And uh, they got to come back and look to attack high percentage shots for Philadelphia. Derek Coleman is dominating a lot of areas in this game. Defensive backboard, low post. And it's Coleman again. Derek Coleman with seven points. So the 76ers with their biggest lead of the night. They're up by nine. Coleman playing with two very sore knees of his own, hyperextended each one of them at different times. Shaw guarded by Hoppering. Does it off the dribble. Nice move by Shaw going left and cutting to the right hand. And that's what I mean by keeping guys in front of you. There's no reason for Shaw to be able to get that deep into the post without Kobe or O'Neal out there. Nice pass, Snow. Aaron McKee missing his first shot, and a foul is called. Loose ball foul that put uh, Ori on the floor. It's on a Hoppering. 36-29, five and a half. Remaining in the first half, McKee and Shaw is on it. Yeah, the, the Sixers can't have one of their droughts. You know, the Lakers are limited in their scoring ability. Bryant is struggling, so they got to really try to apply the pressure and force some turnovers and get some easy scores. They step out defensively, Derek Coleman. Ryan Shaw thought he was fouled. 
Here's Snow, and you can see Kobe cannot. They has they nothing going. Was trying to make the turn and come back, but uh, was not able to make the move. They got to get him out of this. I can't believe Phil Jackson is. Uh, they got to keep him in there so that they at least have a chance to win the game. His presence represents a dangerous offensive player, even though he's injured. A hot hand is that guy, Samaki Walker. Yes, Samaki is six for six. He has 12 points, and the, the 76ers lead by, by seven. I'm sure Kobe is saying, hey, I want to be in there. I want to play, but uh, I, I agree with you, though. The big picture, why, why play him? You're 25% of the way through the season. And their season, it's going all the way to June once again. It, and you can't take chances with a valuable asset like that. But this is a slow oh, and nice. Oh, <laughs> nice pass from Shaw to behind the back on the hop to draw the foul. This is a slow and difficult injury to recover from, and it's going to take some time anyway. You look at Kobe Bryant, so he's going to have to learn how to play with this, and the sooner you learn, the better he's going to be. Some injuries you can't play through, and that's the fallacy of, of a young man being 23 like Kobe Bryant saying, I'm going to play all 82. If it was just about effort, it was just about will and commitment, Grant Hill would still be playing. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson would still be playing. Scotty Pippen would still be playing. <laughs> what, what, what was that? Whoa. <laughs> Broken bones and everything, and then this guy just got a full muscle. Sixers up by four as we approach four minutes remaining. In the first half as Matt Harpring takes it strong to the basket. That's his second field goal. He is, has four points. The Lakers come in with the best record in the NBA. They're 19 and four. However, over the last six, they have gone three up, three down. Medvedenko not able to hit. They come off a loss in Memphis on Friday night. While the 76ers have won three of the last four after losing seven in a row. It's been a season of streaks for Philadelphia. An injury hit, 76er team. Pass intended for a tumbo and a holding foul called on Walker. Philadelphia is making their own breaks here. They're flashing quicker to the ball, and Phil Jackson can only bemoan the fact that the Lakers are three or two for 12 on three-point shooting. They're going to call the push on Walker, and Walker saying, I, I didn't do anything, but he had his arm up, and Matumbo drew the foul, so he'll walk to the line. Lakers are over the foul of it. Matumbo a 75% free throw shooter. Well, New Year's Day at 12.30 Eastern right here on, on NBC. Tune in for the Toyota Gator Bowl, Bobby Bowden Seminoles, and... Freshman quarterback Chris Ricks take on the 15th ranked Virginia Tech Pokies. That'll be New Year's Day, 12.30 Eastern on NBC. Philadelphia's coming with this press all the time, and while Bill Jackson said he wanted to up-tempo the game, it has been Philadelphia's domination of the pace that has resulted in this 9.6er lead. Now, they also have the luxury of Matumbo in the game now, so that's going to close down that high percentage area and keep the Lakers sticking outside. Brian Shaw from downtown. Strong half for Shaw. He has eight points. And the Sixers now lead 41-35. Three for 13, and Brian Shaw, the guy's got two of them. Matumbo on the follow. Matumbo again. Uh, this time he went the shorter route. <laughs> Did he get off the ground on that dunk? Six points for DeKembe. And the Sixers now lead by eight. Kobe Bryant coming up short. Allen Iverson looking to run, but the Lakers get back. And the, the middle is going to be open for Iverson, and it's a question of whether he goes early or not. Snow, yes, Eric Snow extends to a 10-point Sixer lead. Lakers fell into a zone defense that time in transition D, and that has caused Philadelphia problems. That time, Iverson solved it beautifully. Here's Shaw backing his way on Iverson. <laughs> What the 76ers need to do is stay inside, try to move the ball and move people and get high percentage shots. They shouldn't be trying to be a jump shooting team. Derek Coleman getting terrific position, 
So he has 10 points, and the 76ers lead by 10. Fox up front with Medvedenko and Walker, Bryant, and Fisher in the backcourt, and the foul is called on Hoffering. And Hoffering picks up his second. Kobe continues to be unable to explode. Normally, he'd see Harpering out there, and he'd just be able to go right up around him and get whatever he wanted. Well, Samaki Walker had the great first half, and he's trying to stay in the ball game. And, and let's see if he can match that. Samaki with a season high of 15 of the first half. Brian Shaw with 10. That's a season high for Brian. Those were the two guys that kept him in the game, and. Uh, they're going to have to have some sort of offensive hero to duplicate it. Lakers need a lift from, from Derek Fisher. Bryant. Derek has had his ups and downs since making his return to the lineup. The Sixers can do whatever they want defensively. They can back off and challenge the Lakers to jack up the advised threes. They can get out of pressure on the perimeter because they know they don't have to go back and help on Shaq. Matumbo. Now, Matumbo can't complain that he's not getting chances to <laughs> score. He really can't. I mean, he, he needs to really try to get the ball in some sort of rhythm. So if they got him the ball on the move, you have a better chance. <laughs> oh, they're calm. Bombing violation called on Kobe Bryant. But Steve, why would Dikembe complain? They're ahead by 10. They've dominated the game throughout. Kobe Bryant isolated in front of the Sixer bench against Eric Snow. Laker fans wanted a push in the back by Snow, but no, the calming violation called first. I'll tell you why he complained, because everybody likes to shoot that rock. Coleman with the tip. And Coleman again. How about the, uh, the trade speculation stories 10 days ago regarding Dikembe? Matumbo and the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, I, I think that they were ludicrous. <laughs> you know, they, Brown loves to give me Matumbo. And then he hopes to be back in just a few short weeks. We wish him all the best. Mark. All right, Medvedenko able to hit once again. John Black, the publicity director for the, the Los Angeles Lakers. Sixers now lead 55-45. Mark Chick taught us all here in Southern California how to think, play, and love basketball. Chick, we love and miss you. Hurry back, please. Brian Shaw back on the floor. So Shaw, Fisher, and Bryant in a three-guard set for the Lakers, along with Medvedenko and Walker. Medvedenko is the Lakers star of the quarter. He's got six in the quarter, and nobody else has scored. So if you're Philadelphia, you really try to make everything come from the outside. Kobe playing forward now, something he does a lot when Shaq is not in the game. Traveling violation on the tumble. But every one of Kobe's shot is hit the back of the rim. Oh, Kemby hearing it from the crowd. That was meant as a gracious... <laughs> I believe, tap in the direction of the official Violet Palmer. Crowd was trying to incite her to call a technical. Here's Fisher. Well, Derek Fisher won for his previous eight. So the 76ers now lead 55-47. Getting back to the, the trade rumor I threw regarding Matumbo and Denver. And so Fisher, very aggressive, able to come up with a steal. Oh, nicely done off the, the setup from Fisher. And the Lakers have hustled their way back to within six. Brian Shaw having a terrific third quarter here after shining in limited minutes in the first half. Iverson has missed his last six, make it seven shots in a row. Was that a pass? Oh, that was a that was shot. Come on. You haven't seen that. enough Sixer games. Iverson has been <laughs> listening to Larry Brown about getting everybody else involved. He saw the big man roll to the hoop. Just put it up there for him. So the Sixers now lead by eight. Here's Shaw for three. Yes. Ryan Shaw with his third three-pointer. And he has 13. And here's the guy who they have to take a pay cut midway through this opening part of this season. No, Had to give a million bucks back. They didn't ask him to. <laughs> <laughs> they took it from him. 
you know, Phil Jackson thought they would be able to run, they'd be able to pressure and make the uh, Philadelphia 76ers make some mistakes, and this is really the first opportunity, and Medvedenko gets his eight point in transition. And Brian Shaw continues the hot shooting. 13 points for Shaw. Timeout has been called. The Sixers now lead by five. Just under five remaining in the third quarter. The 76er lead has been trimmed to four. They've led by as many as 10. McKee with a wild shot. The tip was missed by Blunt. And here's Bryant laboring again. Brian Shaw has made an incredible difference here. And as you say that, his pass is picked off. Iverson putting moves on Fisher. Walker with the rebound. Allen Iverson has gone the other way after the fast start. One field goal, and, you know, Iverson should have given that one up. Uh, that was a three-on-one. They come away with nothing. And you see Kobe hanging in despite the fact he has just four points, two for 12 from the field. Iverson's missed eight out of his last nine shots. Here's Iverson. Well, the one thing about Iverson, he's not going to stop shooting, so eventually he's going to light a match again. And Kobe Bryant is not able to find the range. Two for 13. When you're injured like that, you can't concentrate on your shot. You're worried about every little movement causing extreme pain. Here's Coleman. And these are the kinds of shots, I think, that let opponents get back in the game against Philadelphia. They had control of the game, and now they're not moving the ball. They're not moving people in direction of the bucket, and they're staying outside. Bryant. And Kobe's not going to stop shooting either. You can hear the buzz in the crowd, and uh, people here, although they can see that Kobe is in pain, will not count. Offensive oh, foul. It's on Derek Coleman. I don't think people here at, at Staples realize the extent of Kobe Bryant's injury. But he's uh, trying to hang in despite that pulled muscle in his rib cage. But at 23 years old and the sixth year in the NBA, we've seen Kobe mature before our eyes. And he, here's a guy who's just having trouble moving. Laker fans are so used to this guy being incredibly dynamic and just separate from the rest of the crowd. Matt Bedenko not able to hold on. Slava Medvedenko has provided a big lift for the Lakers. Eight of his ten points here in the third quarter. Uh, he, he has been the offensive story, and, uh, you know, he has been really aggressive and looking for chances to score. A more spirited Laker defense this third quarter. But who can get a rebound underneath the basket? It's not out by the free throw line. Allen Iverson trying to shoot his way back into it. Here's Shaw for three. Iverson with the save. Larry Brown's got Matumbo and Coleman on the bench together. Uh, but you can, you can see why the, the Sixers are having so much trouble because they don't really have any sure way to score the ball if Iverson breaks down. Roger Bell is hit on the reach-in foul. Call being made by Bernie Fryer, one-time teammate of yours as a member of the, the Portland Trail Blazers, one of the uh, few former players to turn to officiating. Actually, another member of the crew, Leon Wood, another former NBA player. There's, there's Bernie celebrating a birthday today, we're told. Happy birthday to Bernie. He was a terrific player and a... An, an offensive machine, much like Steve Jones, though, who needed a lot of work yeah. on feeding the post. I see. <laughs> Here's Roger Bell. <laughs> That's his first field goal. You notice all of Bill's comments are always about feeding the post. Like a late shot 20 years later. <laughs> Medvedenko. Another superb move. By Slava Medvedenko, who moves pretty well for a guy 6'10", 255 pounds. I don't think he's any taller than 6'8", actually. Iverson. I notice you check guys out. Don't you walk up to them and measure yourself? You measure them. You have to see yeah. what they got. Sixer lead is four. Walker draws the foul. 
In the first half, we talked about how this game for Philadelphia reminded us so much of the game in Washington. As Medvedenko gets what he wants on his way to the hoop, and then they come right back to Samaki Walker. Unlike the first half of this game, the Lakers are going inside. Problem is it. The 76ers have only scored 10 points in the quarter. And you're not going to win if you can't score points. And they talk about defense keeping you in games, but in a game of scoring, you got to have people that make shots. Walker able to slap it down. And the Lakers have come from behind. They're with him once. Crowd here loves it. Guys who normally are not in the scoring column have done it for the Los Angeles Lakers. Nice follow by Matt Pompering. So we're down to 20 seconds remaining in the third. Larry Brown is going with Blunt as his big man when he's got Matumbo and Coleman over there who could do whatever they wanted at any time. Shaw lost the dribble. Final seconds of the third. Iverson for three. Yes! With two tenths of a second remaining in the third. He had hit only one of his previous 12. Allen Iverson from downtown. The 76ers shoot only 8 of 25 from the field in the third, and they lead by six as we head to the fourth quarter. Samaki Walker, a major contributor. Brian Shaw not able to handle that dribble, leading to this. We'll be right back after these words from your local station. Pulls in Los Angeles, Marv Albert, Bill Walton, Steve Jones, Jim Gray on this Christmas night, second of the Doubleheader on NBC. Knicks knocking off Toronto earlier. Allen Iverson very quiet in the third, not shooting well after the good start at 17 of the first half. Kobe Bryant playing with the injured ribs, just 2 of 14. However, Kobe does have 7 assists and 10 rebounds. That is a tremendous effort, you know, when we see uh, the amount of energy that he's expending just to get up and down the floor. But 2 for 14 and 8 for 23. Not good sticking from either guy. And uh, the Lakers are back in the game, only down six. Fourth quarter underway. Iverson now being chased by Lindsey Hunter, who just checked back in. And Allen Iverson, after hitting one of 12, has hit his last two of three at the end of the quarter. And he opens up here in the fourth to extend the Sixers' lead to eight. Where's the Laker offense going to come from right now? Kobe on the bench. Fox and Ori, not creators. Wild shot by Matson. Matson able to keep it alive. And a foul. Leon Wood says, stay right here. It's on Philadelphia. Movement without the ball. Allen Iverson at his best. Coming off a myriad of screens. The staggered double there. Forces Lindsey Hunter to be two steps behind. And with no shot blocking presence, Iverson takes what he wants. Ryan Shaw, Lindsey Hunter in the backcourt, Robert Ory, Mark Madsen, Rick Fox on the front line. Here's Hunter rejected by Iverson. Lindsey Hunter at the start of the season was in the starting lineup in the absence of the injured Derek Fisher. He's been coming off the bench these days. Ory on the rebound. And as you mentioned earlier, Steve Hunter is there for... Uh, not only the three-point possibility, but his defensive play has the long arms. Very quick uh, with his feet and his hands and uh, is going to be able to force some turnovers. But right now, he's lost his confidence. You know, he, he missed some free throws against the Clippers. He doesn't seem to be the same player. And Phil Jackson trying to find a way to resurrect his game. Lindsey Hunter, the first nine games of the season, was playing all the time as Derek Fisher was on the injured list. The last 14 games has not played very much. The cold shooting, the inability to finish from the perimeter, from the free throw line. Spent seven years with Detroit, last year with Milwaukee. Wired in the trade for Rick Foster that was back in, in late June. Hoffering was called on that 76er uh, foul. Kobe Bryant is back. Here's Devin George. 
Rebounded by Corey Blunt. We played a minute and a half of the fourth. 76ers with the ball, leading by eight. Tough to see Devin George struggle like this. He has been a major contributor for the Lakers. Iverson for three. So he has hit his last three shots, and the Sixers open up. An 11-point advantage. Yeah, the good thing is if your big gun never stops shooting, eventually he's going to get hot, and suddenly Iverson's got the torch again, and they, they got a double-digit advantage. 10-0 run for the Sixers. Iverson has eight of those 10 points. Foul committed by Bell. Again, movement without the ball. I think one of the best things about Allen Iverson is that he believes so much in himself. And even when he's going bad, he still thinks that he's going to make shots. So he's relentless. He continues to come at you. And that's what you have to have from your number one score if you're going to win games and you're going to have a big-time score, make shots under pressure. Iverson now has 27 points. This is George at the line. Well, Fear Factor is coming to NBC Mondays beginning in January, that's Fear Factor, the series coming to Monday starting January the 7th on NBC. I think the best part of Iverson's game is his mental toughness, to say nothing of his physical durability and toughness, but also his competitive greatness, doing his best when his best is needed. Eric Coleman is back. Coleman up front with Bell and Blunt. Snow for Blunt. Nice play. Eric Snow with the setup. What happened to the Laker defense? More importantly, what happened to their offense? Matt Bedanko set down, and they're not able to score any points. It's the biggest lead of the game. 13-point margin. Bryant played by Bell. Here's Kobe on a step back. That's his first field goal in quite some time, only his third of the game. First in the second half. But the degree of difficulty of that shot for Kobe makes it highly unlikely that that's going to be the type of thing that sparks something for the Lakers. Well, if they can just get something and get somebody to be a consistent force to keep them close, they'll be okay. Snow had it knocked away. See Kobe grimacing as he moves it down. Able to set it up for Ori, though. Another assist for Kobe Bryant. Finally, a transition play for the Lakers, who wanted to get into an up-tempo game. Phil Jackson said, we got to get this going up and down. It has not happened tonight. Transition play for the Lakers, who wanted to get into an up-tempo game. Phil Jackson said, we got to get this going up and down. It has not happened tonight. Here's Iverson. Looked like Hunter got a piece of it. Three on two. George. Oh, what a move. Devin George with a very difficult shot. It was a three on two break that slowed down to a crawl, but the Lakers <laughs> were able to score. Uh, Lindsey Hunter mishandled. Really upset for no calls in a couple of possessions, and you, you can see the way that Iverson started the game, what he did in the middle of the game, and how he's trying to close it out, and I think the finish for Iverson will be really the story whether the Sixers win this ball game or not. Iverson has 27 at 17 at the half very quiet third quarter 76ers lead by seven first of two meetings this season between the Sixers and the Lakers they'll play again in Philadelphia on Sunday afternoon January 27 off the turnover back come the Lakers Lakers have won 14 of the last 16 here in LA against Philly Lindsey Hunter from downtown Lindsey Hunter with his first field goal and the Lakers are within four Iverson and Snow in the backcourt and a reach in foul charge to Hunter Hunter, who got a very nice touch pass by Robert Ory that included a nice back screen to free up Hunter. Now Corey Blunt sits down to Kevin Matumbo, checks back in. When is Philadelphia going to go inside to Coleman? 
to Matumbo. And Matumbo just came back in the ball game, so I would look for him to be the guy that they go to and they get a moving screen to all the calls going against the 76ers. And what they've got to do is tighten down, stop looking at the officials, and start making better plays. That's the second on Matumbo. Momentum right now, Los Angeles. Philadelphia is so difficult to hold on on the road. Kobe feeling for Snow, draws the double and has to give it up. Walker, they swing it. Here's George off the ball thing. Eric Snow. And Derek Coleman says, let's regroup and let's bring it back inside. Here's Snow. Robert Ory doing a nice job off the boards. Here's Hunter for three. You couldn't have asked for a better chance for Snow to, to, to get a little momentum going for the Sixers on the offensive end, but uh, they got to keep attacking. Coleman stripped by Walker, has the good hands. Here's Coleman back and then draws the double, throws it out. Shot clock down to seven. Iverson trying to shake off Hunter. Iverson with a spectacular move. Somehow, Iverson was able to penetrate. Well, he's bailing out the Sixer offense, but they're not helping Derek Coleman out at all. Because when he gets the ball down low, the Sixers are just standing and watching. 75-69. Philly Ori is reluctant to shoot. <laughs> and then hits the three. Took about five minutes. He decided, well, maybe I will take the shot. They were daring him. Robert Ory was hoping somebody was going to run at him so he could give up the ball up. Well, Robert Ory not shooting well recently. Two for 13 coming into today over the last two games. And the Lakers with him three, allowed to hang around despite the fact that Shaquille O'Neal is out, despite the fact that Kobe Bryant is struggling with the rim injury. Kobe brings the Lakers within one. And Larry Brown by Allen Iverson trying to make it happen. And it's been about six possessions where Philadelphia's come away with nothing. All right, here's Hunter. Blocked by the tumble. George on the follow. And that all began with an Iverson strip. So the Lakers with a 79-75 lead, a 19-2 run by Los Angeles. Ori and Lindsey Hunter have keyed the defensive surge here for the Lakers. Snow rebounded by Walker. down and <laughs> called for steps. He felt there was some contact that uh, led to his trip to the floor. Now Philadelphia's got enough time left in the game to win the game. They have to play with some composure uh, and they haven't done it over the last four or five minutes. Trying to come off the screen, some contact from Iverson and uh, Lindsey Hunter slides and they call it a turnover. 76ers have had difficulties on the road. Lindsey Hunter, here's the roar from the crowd for the hustle. He, he tipped it out of bounds. The Sixers just 5-9 and nine on the road. This a team that had the best road record in the NBA last year going up against a struggling Laker team coming in, although they have the best record in the NBA at 19-4. and four. They split their last six games. They come off a loss against the Memphis Grizzlies. Iverson and Lindsey Hunter... Surprised about the whistle, but a foul call. Hunter. Laker offense in high gear right now. Ball movement. Perimeter jumpers by Lindsey Hunter. And then working relentlessly on the offensive board. That time it was Devin George who's come to life. But Lindsey Hunter is shooting the gap on screens for Iverson. And then when Iverson does get set with the ball, he's forcing him left into help every single time. Well, Iverson's got to make a decision earlier with the ball. But Turbo not able to handle the pass. Devin George, who has been an excellent defensive presence for the Lakers, coming up with that steal. Quick hands down low for the Lakers. Been the difference here. The Lakers by four. Three minutes remaining in the four. Here's Hunter, who's been feeling it. And it will be Philadelphia ball. That's a heat check. Yeah. 
just a bad heat check. I mean, it's not like they got a, time they got a huge lead here, heat check. Aaron McKee guarded by Devin George. Notice how much more aggressive the Laker defense has become. Snow inside. Finding the jumbo. And this a Laker defense that has improved from last year. They allow just under 92 points a game that ranks sixth in the league. And the opponent's field goal percentage number one in the NBA for Los Angeles. Lakers up by two. George. Iverson diving for it. Now McKee. Putting the move on Walker, sets it up for Snow. Ori on the rebound. That is normally Eric Snow's best shot. Standing there with all the time in the world, 18 feet away. Nine rebounds for Robert Ori. Bryant. That was a three-point attempt. Look at, oh, Hoffering. And Ori involved in the pushing and shoving. <laughs> There is football background in uh, Matt Hawkring's life, and uh, he plays very rugged basketball. He and Ori getting involved. Ori on the previous play was all over the floor, all over Matumbo. Foul against Ori. The long rebound away from the ball. Ori and Harpering go to the floor. They're going to call the, the takedown by Robert Ori. Between Robert Ori and Matt Harpering a moment ago, and uh, take a look at the Philadelphia bench area. You'll see the Sixers assistant coach, Randy Ayers, looking to keep players from stepping out of the court, which does lead to suspension. It's something that every team in the league practices on a regular basis and is always reviewing. Ori, who has meant so much in this Laker comeback, so and much of the Laker championship the last two years. A technical foul, apparently double technicals now being handed out. Bernie Fryer walking over to the official scorer's table and uh, says double technical foul on Ori and Hopper. Big possession for the Sixers, and uh, they need this guy to step up and give him something. And a 35 remaining in this fourth quarter. Snow coming up short. Matumbo rebounded by Ori. Robert Ori has done a sensational job off the board. That's rebound number 10. The Lakers lead 79 to 77. Ryan. Played by Snow. That's a tough matchup for Snow. Kobe able to hit over Eric Snow, and the Lakers have an 81-77 lead. So Kobe Bryant has hit shots late after struggling. He now is 5 for 18. He's given the Lakers a four-point lead. Why isn't Aaron McKee guarding Kobe Bryant? Matumbo no. played by Walker. Shot clock at 5. Rebounded by Ori again. You ask why they don't get the ball to Matumbo, and that's the reason he takes too long to get it up, and they've only scored nine points. And a foul is called on McKay for the 76ers, their fourth team foul, four piece on the Lakers and the Sixers. What a remarkable turn of events here at Staples. Kobe Bryant just goes in the post, no double team, no sense of rotation and helping. You see Kobe coming back, rubbing that right rib cage. Wasn't rubbing it enough. I thought the guy was hurt. He told me he couldn't play, and all of a sudden, he's rising to the occasion. Six here in the quarter. Perhaps moving in on a triple-double, 10 points, 11 rebounds, 9 assists for Kobe Bryant, despite the fact he's played in pain. Oh. Hits again! We're looking at a Michael Jordan-type performance by Kobe Bryant. For 14. And you had to wonder if he'd be able to finish the game. He's hit four of his last five. Robert Ory has done the work off the boards. That's rebound number 11. 
And a foul is called. The Lakers have outscored Philadelphia down the stretch 23 to 4. This following that 12 0 run by the Sixers. And that's been the 76ers' problem the entire season. Breakdowns at the offensive end in the fourth quarter of play. And Larry Brown is still trying to figure it out. But they did not score when they had the lead and really could have kept the game in their hands. And then Bryant woke up, and I guess we know why he played, because he can. Yes, but the patience of Phil Jackson, the surge of the team, Shaquille O'Neal enjoying it so very much. This is the kind of game that the Lakers can really build on, try to get out of this funk that they've been in for the last 10 days when they went three for three. Well, you go 500, you're in a funk. When you're the Lakers and you go 500, that is a fun. They were challenging the best start in NBA history at 16 and 1. Then they got a little bored. And from the Sixers' point of view, this is a bad loss. This is a ball game that they had. And this is one they needed to have, too. Uh, Iverson is fouled. Evan George picks it up. It's the start of a seven game road trip for Philadelphia to beat. Back here again tomorrow night to face the uh, Los Angeles Clippers, who have been playing very well. Three straight wins, record of 15 and 11. In effect, Bill, are you doing the Clipper broadcast tomorrow? Absolutely. So this was a warm-up for the local broadcast tomorrow. <laughs> Get all the research work done here. You have all your material, and you show up. He won't even leave the building. <laughs> Few things on earth like the Clipper broadcast. Yes, I, I'm aware of that. Lakers now lead 85-7. Oh, Lindsey Hunter lost it. Eric Snow. Back it goes to Matt Harpering for three. And the 76ers still in it. 85-82. Evan George is fouled. The Sixers are over the limit. So George to the line with 13 and 6 tenths seconds. Remaining in the fourth. Philadelphia has one timeout remaining. They have a 20-second timeout left. And that's it. Uh, Hartbreen makes this shot, and it's a huge shot, but it gives the Lakers a chance to sprint out. And on this play, Eric Snow has to come back with that bad thumb, and he looked like he was grabbing it to try to make the foul against George. Evan oh. George, a 79% free throw shooter. He's now 0 for 3 from the line here tonight. Samaki Walker will check back in. Coming on for Rick Fox. Larry Brown is telling his team take a timeout, which would be their final timeout. He's got his rebounders in there now. He brings Blunt in. He's got Matumbo. This will be an, an immediate timeout, whether it's made or missed, as long as Philadelphia can get the defensive rebound. Well, George extends to a four-point lead, and that's the last along with nine assists, 11 rebounds hit his last four of five after the two for 14 start. Let's go to Jim Gray with Kobe. All right, thank you very much, Marv. Kobe, Marv Albert has seen an awful lot of basketball over the years. He said that this was a Michael Jordan performance. He compared it to what happened in Utah in the finals. How much pain were you in, and how difficult was it for you to play today? Oh, it's pretty frustrating because I, because you can see gaps in the defense that, you know, I, I feel like I could get to them, but my body wouldn't let me get to them. So uh, I just kind of had to get in positions where I could do something effectively quickly. Well, you were effective at the end, making all those shots, but you couldn't run. You told me at halftime you couldn't penetrate and you couldn't breathe. Should you have really played today? Excuse me? Should you have really played today? Uh, well, in hindsight, yeah, because we got the W. But I just tried to pace myself and get to a point where a team needed me to score and uh, made a, make a couple big baskets, and I was able to do that.